What's going on guys? In the last video, we talked about compositing 3D objects into your footage. Well, today we're gonna to talk about compositing a 3D background into your footage. We're gonna talk about why 3D is great for this. You can control lighting, camera movements, interactive elements, and more. You can even reuse these sets that you create with this 3D environment to create different camera angles and shots for your entire project. If you're new here, consider leaving a like for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you wanna see more tutorials like this and comment below anything you'd like to see next. Let's hop in and get started. Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. As someone who is constantly trying to learn and teach new things for a living, I believe sites like Skillshare are extremely important. Skillshare has everything you need to go from passion to paycheck or to seed your side hustle. I personally really like their curated learning path classes. I've been recently watching this, your creative business, build it, brand it, and launch it path. Being able to learn from different experts in all walks of life is extremely useful and it gives you some really unique insight when you're looking at one specific skill like marketing, for example, in all of these different dimensions. Skillshare is one of the largest learning communities for creatives. There's a vast amount of different skills that you can learn about on there. So if you guys are interested in checking it out, the first 500 people to use my link at the top of the description, we'll get a one month free trial of Skillshare. All right, guys. So before we hop into Blender, we're going to start off by preparing our footage. And to do that, we're going to first render out a version of the footage with the background removed and then a normal version. So if you guys have a green screen footage, go ahead and use something like After Effects. You can even do this in Blender if you want to key out the background. Now I'm going to make my life a little bit harder. I'm not even going to use green screen footage. I'm just going to use the rotoscope tool within After Effects just to show you that you can do this with normal footage as well. We essentially just need the background removed from the subject. Once you guys have that, we're going to clean up the roto brush a little bit at the end. If you guys are having trouble at this stage, I'll leave a green screen keying tutorial below as well as a rotoscope tutorial below so you guys can get the best possible masking results going into Blender. But either way, let's go up to file export and we're going to go over to the render queue here. I'm going to click the settings for this. I'm going to render this as a PNG sequence. You want to make sure you click RGB plus alpha so that we render with that transparent background. Once you've done that, just go ahead and click on the output link here. And we're going to set up a folder for where we're going to output this PNG sequence. So create a new folder, click OK, and then render out this image sequence. I'm going to do the exact same thing with the normal footage just so I can get tracking information from that. So go back to your composition. I'm going to just turn off the roto brush effect. Go up to file, add to render queue, do the same thing. You don't have to render out with the alpha this time and then create a new folder and render out that PNG sequence. So you should have an image sequence folder of your transparent background with your keying or your masking, and you should have an image sequence of just your normal footage. I highly recommend if you are new, if you're just starting out, try and use footage that is shot on a tripod, shoot the footage yourself on a tripod. That way you don't have to account for any motion. I'm going to show you both methods here, shot on a tripod and handheld. If it is shot on a tripod, all you have to do to bring your footage into Blender is go up to file and import image as plain. If you're not seeing that import option, just go to edit preferences, search in the add-ons for it. It should be there. Make sure that's enabled. Because we're on a tripod, we don't have to account for any camera movement. So you could just set this up and start building a 3D scene behind this. In terms of the shader settings, you just want to go over to your shader editor. Make sure you plug the image texture into the emission instead of the base color socket. Set the strength to one and the base color to black. Now, if you want to see the video footage playing in Blender, when you scroll through the timeline, go ahead and change from single image to image sequence. You may need to reload the image sequence location for this to work. Then just bump up your frames to however many frames you rendered out. For me, it was 75 and then check on auto refresh. Now, when you move through the timeline, you should see your transparent video playing. Now I'm going to show you here how to track your motion in case you have some handheld motion or you're moving around in your scene. Now, before you do that, very important step, make sure you come over here to the output settings. You're going to want to set the resolution so that it matches whatever you're trying to track, as well as the frame rate. You can find that in After Effects. If you just look in the top left in your project bin, it'll give you all the info you need. If you are trying to track your scene, I recommend you keep it simple. If you want to do some advanced projection where you have characters moving around in 3D space, I recommend you check out Ian Hubert's green screen videos. That video is a goldmine of tips for advanced movement projection and working with green screen. In this case, we only have some minor camera movement in the shot, so we can figure this out with some simple motion tracking in Blender. Again, if you're working with tripod footage, you can skip this. Just use the timestamp below. So I'm going to go up and click this plus sign and I'm going to go to VFX and motion tracking. I'll click open here and I want to open up the PNG sequence without the background removed. So just the normal footage. 
First on the top left, we're going to click set scene frames and prefetch. To start our track, I'm just going to hold down control on my keyboard and I'm going to click to set down some track markers on some of these parts in the background. You're going to get the best results when you're working with footage that doesn't have a lot of motion blur. So keep that in mind. You want smooth footage, fast shutter speed. You're going to want to put down at least eight of these track markers in the background. If you want, you can also click this detect features button and play around with these parameters just to have some extra tracking points. Once you have your track points down, start at frame zero here and we're going to click this button to track forward. All right, so once we've tracked to the end, we're going to do the exact same thing from the end. We're going to set some track points and this time we're going to track backwards. So now we have a decent amount of tracking data. If you want, you can keep getting tracking info from the center and create some more points. But either way, let's go over to the next tab over here on the left. Go ahead and click here to solve the camera motion and then check in the top right for your solve error. You want to try and lower this solve error as much as possible, ideally around 0.8 or lower. So to clean up our tracks, just click on this clean track section and then raise this error threshold to select any tracks that have a high chance of generating an error and then delete those tracks. Once you've done that, you can click the solve camera motion button again. And as you guys see here, I lowered my solve error a significant amount. So if you guys want to, you can repeat those steps to try and clean up the tracks and find that happy medium. Optionally, you can also check these two refine checkboxes to calculate for the focal length as well as any lens distortion. So that's about it for our track. We can go ahead and click these two buttons down here to set this as our tracking background. So let's switch back over to layout. Another helpful little tip, if you click on this arrow in the top right, you can enable this motion trackers checkbox. That will allow you to see these motion tracking points in 3D space. This is really useful for if you're trying to recreate the dimensions of a specific scene, or if you have a ton of tracking information with a successful track, this can be very useful for knowing where in 3D space you want to place objects. So let's start to set up our scene. Let's click on the camera here and go into the camera view. If you go over to the camera options in the bottom right, you can load in the transparent background remove version so that you can actually see what's going on behind our subject here and you can start to composite whatever you want into the background. If alternatively you don't want this as a background image, you could also just import images as planes like I showed you earlier. Align that plane within the view of the camera and then just select the plane, shift select the camera and click control P to parent it to the camera. That way the plane will move with the camera you can still toggle it off and on if you want. So when it comes to building out a background for our scene, I like to start off by using primitive objects just to block off the general shape of what I want. For example, you can click shift A and add in a cube, then just play around with the scaling and the location of that cube to make it look like a wall. You can duplicate that cube, rotate it so that you have a ceiling, and then add in some lights, and you're already starting to have a basic setup for what your background's gonna look like. Now, if you're getting a little stuck thinking about what to make for the background, or maybe you know what you wanna make, but you're just having trouble making it fit into the composition of your existing footage, I recommend you guys use references. And I'm going to show you a little tip here to generate some references that are similar to the footage that you're already putting in. So I like to use Midjourney AI just to create some reference images for how I'm going to composite and frame things in this scene. I'm going to go into Discord where I have my Midjourney bot set up. You can actually do this when you're first rendering out your footage in After Effects if you want, because you're already going to have that rendered frame ready to go. And from here, I'm just going to drag in a frame from my PNG sequence of the normal footage. I'll go ahead and just upload that normally to Discord. Once it's uploaded, you can click on the image here and click open in browser. You want to copy the link address from that tab that just opened up in your browser and then pop back over to Discord. From here in Midjourney, you can type in slash imagine and then control V to paste in that address. This is going to tell Midjourney to use that image as an input. So now I can type in a prompt of the general idea I want to create in Blender. So I'm going to type in sci-fi man standing in front of infinity pool. And then very important here, two things that are going to help you a lot when it comes to referencing, because again, we're just using this for framing things properly. You want to type in dash dash AR and then space your aspect ratio. So in this case, I'm working with vertical. So I'll go 916. Then I'll click space again, dash dash IW and I'll go one. IW stands for image weight. And we're essentially just telling Midjourney to create an image that's similar to our original input. So now you guys can see we've generated some reference images which are in the exact same aspect ratio as our original. I think this is extremely useful. Reference images are great. And I think if you're going to use a reference image, it's better to use a tool like this where you have control over the output as opposed to going on something like Behance or Pinterest and searching through to find the exact aspect ratio, the exact style you're going for. Again, another completely optional step, but I thought that this would be helpful to mention.
So let's go back into Blender. We can bring in our references like we did earlier. Just go up to File, Import Images as Planes, and we'll just align these over in the 3D space so that we can check them out later. So from here, you can go in and create whatever it is you want to make. I'm just gonna show you this time lapse of me recreating the general feel from one of these reference images. I'm not gonna spend time explaining every little step because there's hundreds of tutorials out there teaching you how to create every type of different environment out there. This video is more so focused on the workflow of everything. If you want an explanation of all the steps, I'll put like a long one hour explanation video on my Patreon if you really wanna check that out. So a link to that will be down below. Also, it's a good idea before you go in and put in hours of work, texturing, adding all the little details. Once you've blocked everything off, do a quick little EV render bring that back into After Effects and just check and make sure that your track is correct. Make sure that your camera motion is matching up from your original footage. We'll talk about all of the render settings and bringing everything back in After Effects at the end. The trickiest part of compositing a background is matching the lighting as best as possible. You want to study the original footage and pay attention to the existing light sources in that scene, then try and mimic those light sources in your 3D background. In this shot, our subject is in a dark sort of bluish cave. If I was to try and composite him into a daytime forest, for example, the results would not be very compatible. So take this into account. You can go onto a site like polyhaven.com and find HDRI environment textures for your 3D scene. Just pick one that's similar to the lighting of your input footage to help match up the environment lighting and reflections of your 3D scene. So once you have designed your background, you've made all your adjustments, you've paid attention to the lighting, let's bring everything back into After Effects to fully composite everything together and make it look like it's one shot. So back in After Effects, to bring in our 3D render, we're going to right click into our project bin and go to Import, Multiple Files. Navigate to the folder where you rendered out your 3D background from Blender. We're going to click on the first frame and click Import, and then click Done. So if we drag this as a layer underneath, we can take a look at this and you're going to see it's automatically not lining up with the footage. And that's because After Effects is automatically going to import this at 30 FPS. If I reveal my normal footage here, this is 25 FPS. So go ahead and just right click on the background image sequence layer, go to interpret footage, main, and we're going to assume the frame rate of 25 so that it matches. Now you'll see this will line up properly. You also want to check with the composition settings, make sure this is all matching. So now your camera movement should be matching up with your 3D background. Again, very important to match up that frame rate. If you see here, this is my final result, but in a 30 FPS timeline, that's what I normally record at with OBS. You can see it's just jittering some frames because of that frame rate mismatch. So make sure every composition you're working in has the same frame rate and sequence settings throughout. In terms of color correction and any other additional steps, it's a good idea to add a little bit of blur to any 3D thing you're compositing just because 3D will always render everything very sharp. So you can use either a camera lens blur or something like a fast box blur. We're just going to bump that up a little bit so it looks a little bit more realistic. You can also right click down here and add a new adjustment layer. Something as simple as adding a color grade can help match things a lot better. I can load in one of these custom LUTs and then I can just control the balance of everything until I have it looking the way I want. There's also more subtle details like matching colors in the shadows or matching the bright spots or the dark spots. For example, here we have a little bit of blue in the shadows on our subject's face. I can mimic that in our 3D background just by adding a little curves effect and bumping up the blue in the darker spots just to add that color into the shadows. Like I mentioned, you can do this with the lights, you can do this with the darks. If you hover your mouse over a specific area, you can actually see the RGB numbers for that color. So that can be a useful reference to use to try and match values. So hope you guys did enjoy this video. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I feel like there's a ton of different advantages when it comes to creating your own 3D background. You can create different angles and different shots from this environment. You can change the lighting. You can have the lighting react to the music of your music video. Tons of different fun things. I hope you learned something new from here. I hope this video helped. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.